Hello, my name's Fred McNeil, and thank you for watching QAC TV7. You're watching a great show called Conversations with Fred. Each week we have different men and women come join us and tell us about the great things going on in Queen Anne's County, events you might want to participate in, or certainly things you need to know about. This week we're real lucky. We have the Queen Anne's County Public Schools Teacher of the Year, Stephanie McKenzie. Stephanie, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. I know me. that Jeff Strait recommended you be here. You did some bad advice by coming anyway, but we'll <laughs> yes. get you through it, all right? Anyway, first of all, congratulations on being Teacher of the Year. Thank you so much. You know, every, honor. every time I walk in the Board of Ed, is, tell me if it's still there. You, the back entrance of pictures of all the teachers. All the of teachers year. of the year um, for as long as. Going way back to Mrs. Boardley. Yes. Who taught my 45 year old son in school at Centerville Elementary. I mean, I'm not going to go through all the names, but those pictures, you will be up there and you certainly deserve it. And congratulations. Oh, it's quite an honor. So really you, look at that. That's, since you're a countywide teacher of the year, mm -hmm. how about tell everybody where you grew up, where you're from, when you went to school, what got you into education? See this gray here? <laughs> 40 years, <laughs> Stephanie. I'm warning you. Okay. All right. I'm already starting to get there. Okay. Um, okay. So I grew up in Dover, Delaware, oh, okay. um, where I graduated from Caesar Rodney High School. Mm -hmm. You should compete against you in sports all in the old days. Exactly. Yeah. Cross country. I was actually over here quite a bit. Um, you ran cross country? I ran cross country I was a cross country coach at Queen Anne's County High. We probably, really? brought, we yes. probably met. In you some... beat us. You beat us every year. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so I grew up there, um, worked on cars with my dad okay. um, for the longest time. Uh, didn't know exactly what I wanted to do going out of high school. Was that typical confusion, sure. you know, big, big no, life but, decisions. Sure. Um, so I went to Delaware Technical Community College okay. first. Okay, Tech, right. Yeah. In Dover. In Dover. Sure. I and know. that's actually where my grandmother had uh, worked as a clerk. So oh, wow. I got to see her every day, and that oh, was wow. really cool as well. She kept in class. On she, well, she kept making sure I was in the right classes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then I got done with that, um, and I transferred up to uh, Wesley College in Dover, okay, which sure. sadly is no longer after this year. Oh, Wesley College? Um, yes. Yeah, I Delaware State University bought them. Oh, wow. um, um, and so the college is closing June 30th. Yep. Oh, wow. Yep. I didn't know that. I know. So sad. We actually just went over and took pictures and took my daughter over there. It was a great school. It was a great school. It was, yeah. a, it was uh -huh. a fantastic private okay. school. It was. Um, so I got my bachelor's in history there because I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do, but I love history. So did my wife. So I know where you're coming from. I now. know. And so, um, and then I, I had taken a couple of teaching classes while mm -hmm. I was there, and I um, got to be in a kindergarten classroom during one of them and absolutely loved it. So I decided from there, okay, let's, let's head into the teaching realm. Okay. So I went to Wilmington University, and my mom always told me, you've got to graduate college sometime. Like, what are you going to do? Yeah. you got to leave school Get a job. Eventually. Get out of the house. Get a job. you got to yeah. leave school. Sure. And so, um, ha, ha Mom, I'm still in school. <laughs> <laughs> Don't throw me out yet. I, so I got my master's from Wilmington University okay. um, in secondary education. All right. And then um, my wonderful husband, I met him back in 2006. Um, but we wanted to get through college before we had any big plans. So after um, getting my master's, that's when we moved over here because he's from Queen Anne's County. Queen Anne's he County. graduated oh. right here at the high school. Same last name. Same last name. Now, you're all re any related to Craig McKenzie? Is that different from him? No, that's okay. a different, yeah. He was a cross-country runner that I coached. Was he? Lives up in the Southern Zone. Okay, well. Okay, small world. Okay. It is a very small world, okay. isn't it? Um, so, came back here um, and started uh, as a student intern under Sean Barnum okay. at S Stevensville Middle School um, as a history teacher there and loved it. And that's where you ran into my wife. And that's, that's when I ran into your wife okay. when I was brought on as a new teacher. Yes. McNeil's are like a disease, a bacteria <laughs> spreading. Uh, okay. Well, good. I'm glad. And she loves history. And, and if, if yes. you have as much as enthusiasm for the subject as she has, you have it made. It's a wonderful thing. It is. It's a fascinating subject to, to fall in love with because history is the study of writing. Yes. And so prehistory is the study before writing. And once you understand that, even in English language arts, you're still reading historical texts on a daily basis. And it's just, I love bringing history to life through text. And I love reading different texts and showcasing student, to students how 
when people write, they write about what they're living through. Sure. And so you can really gain perspective. It's like a diary to what's going on. It really right? is. It really is. So what are we doing now, Stephanie? Where are you now teaching? So I am now teaching at Sellersville Middle School in okay, English the language new arts. Building. The new oh, building. The new building. You got yes. it made. We've got Best principal grade. in the county, right? Yes, Rob Watkins. He's fantastic. I taught Rob. Did you really? Rob rented from me. Oh my goodness, this is such a I, I have pictures, <laughs> Stephanie, I have pictures if you need them, okay? <laughs> Give me the blackmail later. Okay. Right. <laughs> Rob, be careful, be good. Leave this woman alone, okay. Um, now, what grade are you teaching then? So, eighth grade. So, eight, mm -hmm. now, is eighth grade, what, what is it, just a composite history? Or what, is, what is eighth grade history like? So, I teach English language arts. Oh, you do English um, language arts. But I've, I've taught eighth grade history. I've taught okay. seventh grade and okay. sixth grade history. I've actually taught many different things in my okay. ten years here. Um, but eighth grade is U.S. history specifically. Oh, good so, for you. So early colonial period to about 1865. Oh, great. Um, I, I love middle school. Middle school students, they still liked adults. I thought that was the best part. Mm -hmm. uh, they are hormone crazed. That's oh, what you have to yes. be worried about. But it's a, it's a delightful year because they still, if you can legally hug or shake hands or whatever we can do, you still get that little, they're not quite at the age where, hmm, that yeah, woman's a teacher. Yeah, they're not the teenager yeah. locking themselves in, the, in their bedroom for hours on end just yeah, yet. Yeah. No. Now, how many years have you been there? So I've been there for two years. Okay. Um, last year was my first year as the English language arts teacher. Okay. The year prior, I was reading specialist for intervention. All right. Well, good mm -hmm. for you. Okay. Now, so tell me about it. I should have interrupted you earlier, but... Car, your dad and cars. Tell me yes. about the car thing. That sounds interesting. So, um, since I was eight years old, okay. um, my dad is a parts manager up at Lexus of Wilmington. Okay. So I, oftentimes on weekends, summers, I would go up with him and I would work on. Um, we would do wholesale, um, uh, you know, uh, taking care of the shop, the mechanics, whatever they needed. So you hung around with pads, dad. oil yeah. filters, okay. rotors, you name it. I was okay. doing it all. Um, and so, uh, and then once I got my bachelor's and I was going to, uh, school at night for my master's cause mm -hmm. it gets quite expensive. Fred. Oh yes. So I was working during the day in wholesale, um, automobile that, parts. Yes. Automobile okay. parts. Okay. So I was taking, um, calls from insurance companies, other auto, uh, body systems, getting the parts that they needed to fix the cars. Um, during the day, and then at 6 o'clock, I would head out of there, go to, go to school, school until 10 p.m. at night, and then drive an hour home. <laughs> oh, so it Lord. Was, I remember those graduate oh. school days. They were great, weren't they? 7 to 10, you had no life. You had to read the books and do the papers, yep. and plus you're working on top of yes, that. Oh, yes, yes. Yep. That's why I always tell my kids, if you can get scholarships, go for them. Because, now, are you into the car, oh. the mechanics part, or are you just... We're selling, uh, selling so I was mostly the wholesale okay, um, okay. parts. Uh, I mean, you counter haven't got a Corvette out parked out front. No, of no, no. Although quick. my okay. husband wants one of, oh. he wants a um, play car. Is what oh, he calls it. Oh, good for him. So boys I'm, need their toys. That's right? coming. I know it is. <laughs> Wait till he gets me my age. It's seventy four. You get him the car and say, "Look it, go west, <laughs> young man, go west." Okay. Hey, Stevie, do me a favor. The audience, I don't think knows. I mean, I didn't know how involved. Talk, let's talk about first about how the process of getting selected Teacher of the Year, and then if you're fortunate enough to get it, which you were, uh, then the track you're on after that. It's not like, here's a, here's a trophy, goodbye, don't bother no. me. You had to, <laughs> tell me what you had to do just to go through the beginning process of applying for it. Oh goodness, it's such a whirlwind. Um, mm -hmm. And I still, it's unbelievable what has all occurred, because it's just such an unexpected honor. Because um, amidst the pandemic, um, teaching was something completely new. We'll talk about that later. But how yes. in the world can anybody do so, virtual and live? But be, I'll be quiet. Uh, <laughs> so let me answer your first question. Go ahead. So, My apology. Um, when the email came across of all the lists of nominees, it was 65 or 64 mm -hmm. fabulous teachers from across the county. Yeah. That parents, teachers. Um, uh, other staff members, students, community members had all nominated. nominated. People, right. And so out of that collection, 65 were on the list. And then they wanted you to apply. Okay. And the application um, was quite extensive. There were several essays it's that not, you had to answer. It's not write an essay why I have no, a cat. No, this no is, these this are is. like, um, how have you uh, diversified your classroom? How have you met the needs of all different mm. learners in your classroom? How have you been equitable? Um, how have you met social emotional learning demands or the needs of your students? Like, these are really complex questions yeah. you had to answer yeah. in 500 words or less. 
hmm. mind you. And I'm a wordy person, so okay. this was You're very English difficult. Teacher. You got it right. You it got was it right. very difficult for me. Right. Um, and so you had to do the essays. Um, there were five of them. Five? That's, this five is, of did them. Did you get three credits for this? I mean, I uh, wish I did. I should have asked that question. I'm going to blame on Jeff Strait putting you through all this work. You know that, <laughs> I should have asked that question. That's a fabulous question. <laughs> I get six credits for applying. So you send in this application thinking, all right, um, let's just go for it. Let's see what happens. Um, and all of a sudden, then uh, out of nowhere, I'm, I'm in the middle of teaching. I'm trying to make sure that the hybrid students are online at the right A time because the bell just year, went off and there's kids in the room. And then Dr. Kane comes walking in and I'm just floored. <laughs> And I, at first, I thought I was in trouble because I was like, oh, my goodness, what is happening? But then I saw <laughs> I didn't the do basket my she was holding. Oh, wow. So um, it, it really started uh, to come to light then. And then the finalists were selected. Um, and then out of all the, the five finalists that were selected, fabulous group of teachers, just all of them. Okay. You just look around. Every year it's a wonderful group that get, makes it. Oh, my gosh. Anyone who gets nominated, first of all, gets, as yes. far as I'm concerned, give them a 50% pay and rate. And all the history teachers that were nominated, oh, Fred. Oh, very good. Oh, oh we, very good. we had a showing for history teachers. Oh, very good. Very good. Um, so very proud of that yeah, with the history department. Just got to give us a little. Yeah. little yeah. No, no, it doesn't <laughs> hurt. My wife is standing up applauding now, yes. Stephanie. So go ahead. Um, so then out of the finalists, then we had to go in for the big interview. Okay. And just and this is going for and describe it. This is a, a bunch of people sitting around a table. Uh, so, you, so it's the boardroom. Okay. Um, you sit right up front where, like, there's the desk that mm -hmm. typically this, the the speakers would go, go to. Yes, yes right, the right. presenters would mm -hmm. sit at, and you sit there and just you look out in the room, and at every single table there was somebody writing notes and watching <laughs> you, and then you had cameras in the back because some because of social distancing filmed. at the okay. time had the zoom in or something. Yes. yes, yes. And so it, you just kind of look around the room and think to yourself, okay, take a deep breath, be yourself, yeah. and that's really all, the, all you can do. Just be the best self you can. Right. Um, and make sure that your message gets across. So you have the final interview, and then what is this? Did they have a gala this year to announce it? How did they announce the winner? Yes, they had that. a virtual gala, which I have heard raving reviews about. Many employees hope that they continue they should. You know, to they, do yeah. some kind of televised yeah. part for those that can't attend the gala. Um, but they had it at the Board of Ed office. They brought us all in. Um, oh, all you were there and you didn't know at that point? No, oh, had wow. no idea. Was standing outside, social distancing. They were bringing all the other <laughs> outstanding employees of the okay. year through. And oh, everybody the was celebrating the year, in the, the hallways. Right, yes, right. everyone okay. was celebrating the hallways. And it, high five. It was, so, it was so wonderful. Oh, it was great. It's a wonderful event. It was. And then and we they all, just announced it and you all? They, we all got in the room and it was the longest few minutes of my life, just sitting there <laughs> thinking, oh my gosh, And Burt be Parks okay. comes in singing, here she is, Miss America. <laughs> you probably, Stephanie, do you know who Burt Parks is? No, you no, don't. No, I That's don't. Right. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. <laughs> Jeff will explain it later. Okay. Well, that must have been exciting. It was very exciting. And I, I remember the moment where Dr. Kane was getting ready to announce it, and I didn't hear my name. Oh, you didn't hear? I saw everybody looking at me, and my husband's like, get up. <laughs> you won. You won. <laughs> Oh, your husband was there. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's so great. it was my husband, my student intern that I had, oh, nice. um, my co-teacher Heidi, and um, my two principals. So we had the we had a full oh, table. Oh, very there. good. Okay. It was it was a fantastic experience. Oh, so you had a nice little group to give hugs and whatever, whatever you legally could do. And to make sure that distance. I made it up to the podium to give my speech. <laughs> <laughs> As you fainted, right? Well, that's great. Okay. Now, how about so that's a lengthy process. Mm -hmm. Now, in, one of the things that amazes me. Okay, you had that night. It's not over. It's just it beginning. <laughs> so if you could share with the public some of the events you have coming up that sure. you know of so far. Sure. So um, immediately, like the week after um, being announced as Teacher of the Year for 2021-2022 mm -hmm. school year, then uh, you had to fill out all of these different applications for the state okay. um, and go through that process. And thank goodness Betsy held my hand throughout that process, and Jeff was right there with me. Um, and we were able to get that done within a couple of weeks span. It was quite extensive as well, more extensive. So that has to go to the state. Yes, more extensive hmm. than the application for Queen Anne's County. Okay. Um, and so now we're just in a waiting period to find out um, if I've been uh, oh, nominated, nominated for the final. Say that you won the local contest, now yes. we go to the state Now we level. go to state. Oh, now has that been decided yet or is that still being that decided? That has not been decided. Okay. So yeah, no, no secret hints. No you secret know. hints. I okay. wish I knew. Um, they are selecting their finalists and then they're pulling in for interviews in September. 
and okay. announcing October 7th in a televised event. Oh, very good. Now, do you go, now, in, the, in the old days, they used to go to the White House. You do, is that just the state representative that goes to the White House? So I'm not sure. Okay. Um, You'll find out. A lot of things have changed okay. with COVID, but now that everything's opening back up, it does seem like more okay. things are coming back onto the schedule. Have you heard about the dreaded boat trip? No. They take the teachers you on a boat out of Annapolis, I believe, and take you out in the bay and you go fishing. Everyone's getting seasick. No, I'm a teacher. I just want to go back. Okay. That sounds great to me. I'm, I'm good on boats. Now, Stephanie, okay. you get a, uh, are you still given a car? And a Do you know anything about that yet? Or? So I've heard that I get a car, yes. um, and I have no idea what it is. Uh, okay. All my students have been asking me this question, yeah. like, Miss Mack, do you know what car you're getting? Right. This is the most important thing. Like, um, That's pretty exciting. A free it car is, for a year. It's very right? exciting. Okay. I okay. have no idea when it's going to happen, okay. but I'm looking forward but to it. But you do get a car. Yes. Now, do they have, like, I've heard that you will speak before the new teachers will come in. Yes. And the role is to be, like, a cheerleader or get them going. Or, hey, yeah, welcome. just an inspirational oh, speaker. Oh, good. Okay. Um, and I absolutely love talking to new teachers. They oh, have man. these aspirations to just dive right into the oh. classroom like I, I did. I wish I, I had their energy, Stephanie. You I mean, know, I wish sometimes I, I need their energy, oh, no. <laughs> especially you, after last year. <laughs> and you get to go to the, uh, they're going to have it again this year, the Queen Anne's County Fair. Yeah. Ride with the superintendent. That's always nice because the crowd cheers you and you have a good time. Oh, I, I look forward to and that. And they used to have a thing, again, I'm asking, uh, the Chamber of Commerce used to have a special night, I believe, for the Teacher of the Year. And, and then you get all types of gifts and goodies and the community oh, kind of says thank you. Oh, yeah, rent a van. Tell your husband, get a, get a U-Haul. <laughs> oh, right. The community is so good to the, not only to education, but to the Teacher of the Year. They uh, always have been. They give you a lot of goodies and stuff. Now, do you, does it, as a Teacher of the Year, do you have a theme or a message you want to get out to the public or to the schools? I mean, is it kind of like, uh, hey, we survived 2020, 2021. <laughs> Help us, or is there well, a theme for the Teacher of the Year? Yes, yeah, okay. so um, coming out of this historic year of teaching. How did, say, I mean, how no. did you do it? How did any teacher do it? I don't know it? how we yeah. did it. Tell the public what you did. <laughs> so, um, gosh, none of us signed up to be virtual teachers. No. You know, um, and the rules change every day, but right? But we figured it yeah. out. Yeah. Like, we made mistakes. The kids made mistakes, but everybody was okay. You used and a great phrase. at the end phrase, of the day, yeah. you just rolled with what you had. Yeah. You used a great statement earlier when you and I were talking. You were building the plane while you were flying you were the plane. building the plane while flying. Um, you know, and responding to what was happening. I mean, there were several times in virtual learning where we lost internet in the, in the <laughs> northern end of the county. So I had some of my students in front of me and other students at home that couldn't log in because there was no internet. How did you do? I mean, look, I, so, Stephanie, I, <laughs> Stephanie I'm, I'm having a hard, I have a hard time talking <laughs> to a person in the studio. If I knew there was 30 more people, I, was, I had yeah. to direct my, how did you do it? How did teachers do it? Um, so at first you tried different technology. I tried wearing a mic with a headset I felt okay. like one of those telephone operators for and a while. you got live kids and live TV kids, kids so yeah. you're still like moving around the classroom you're using um, the board behind you to manipulate so that the kids at home see the same thing that the kids are seeing mm -hmm. in the classroom the mm -hmm. kids at home are hearing the same thing but then I found out um, from another teacher in the building that the stereo system when it was built at Southersville Middle School picks up everything you say <laughs> so I didn't need the headset anymore oh, okay. So then my students at home could talk to my students in the classroom by coming oh, through wow. the speakers. Through the PA system. Yes. So we were having full collaboration between students in the classroom and at home in this virtual learning environment. And it worked out to where I didn't feel like I was juggling so many things because it felt like they were there. They were there. You know, Stephanie, I, most of, I went to school, I hate to admit it, in the 50s and 60s as a student. I taught from the 70s up to last March. I think teachers have gone through more change and more challenges in the last 18 months or 14 months than we did from the 1950s to the whenever I got out of education in 2010 or 11. Mm -hmm. I mean the public has to realize attendance how did you do attendance when students I mean how, how, how did you know they were there? So here's the biggest thing that comes mm -hmm. out of all of this um, is that our kids went through trauma. We went through oh, trauma. I bet they did, yes. Um, and what a lot of people don't realize is that there's the fight or flight response. When you're given a critical life situation, you either flee or you confront it. And sometimes when you have a child who doesn't understand what to do, they get stuck. Oh, yeah. And they start to act in different ways. And that's what we really need to focus on as we head back into the schools for summer school and next year is the fact that we have to help our children process 
no matter what their age is right now, through kindergarten, through 12th grade, even on, our college students are still processing what happened last year so and the year prior. Yeah, I was sitting around with a bunch of older teachers, and we think, our opinion means nothing, but <laughs> we think this September of 2021 is going to be one of the most challenging years in the history of education. You yes. have students, elementary school students, don't have a line up anymore. Have, you have the stamina is gone. Oh yeah, and and all of a sudden you're going to say to somebody, I want you to be a student for six and a half, seven hours, where they haven't had to do that except on a computer, and then you're going to have the whole discipline and socialization thing. Yes. Hey, I got to deal with people again. Yes. I have to deal with an authority figure. It's not mom tell me turn on the computer. It's like a teacher saying, Johnny, page thirteen, yada yeah. yada yada. I mean, how are you guys going to do that? So you have to be empathetic. It's called empathetic teaching. Mm -hmm. You have to listen to the students. You know, and all of our teachers know their standards, the curriculum, what sure. they are supposed to teach. We teach the whole child, though. So we have to listen and respond to what our children have gone through and how they're experiencing this. We can't mm -hmm. ignore the social emotional learning that has to happen in order for academic learning to happen. Because if a child's basic needs aren't being met, mm -hmm. they can't learn. So in September, it's going to be really important to understand that empathy is a must. We have to meet the kids where they are. We can't expect these high expectations without first meeting them where they are. Sure. Stephanie, I, I think tragically a lot of children weren't eating properly, right? Oh, no. All this, I heard that your no. summer schools this year, uh, Kevin Kintop told us, will be serving a breakfast and a lunch. Yes. And the idea being... They still have the meals to go going yeah. on right now. And, you know, we're, we're worried that children probably, they're, what meaning their nutritional needs, psychological mm -hmm. needs, we're not even in the ballpark. We don't know no. what... I mean, there are children, as you know, that were by themselves or with their siblings. Well, and there's a lot of students that are also de um, designated as homeless now yeah, yeah. because of this pandemic. Um, and so, uh, you know, families lost homes, families went through divorce, they experienced loss. Mm. These are things that children, when you have life traumatic events at such an early age, they change that person oh, for yes. life. They have an impact. But we can have a positive impact by understanding the children where they are. It's going to be, if we could, I know hugs are frowned upon, but it's going to be a lot of they empathy need, is the word, yes. hugs. I think elementary and middle school students, I mean, I know I had my grandchildren. I, one, was, uh, one, of the one, one of the ones I had was an elementary school student. I cannot him imagine him being in a school setting from nine to three because yeah. he's, he's not used to sitting in one spot. And, they, uh, how are they gonna, and that's yeah. what you saw at home. Yeah. Things that I saw um, were siblings taking care of their baby oh, yes. sisters, baby brothers. Um, Mom and dad had to work. Mom and dad finally were able to yeah. find a job amidst yeah. the pandemic and had to go to work, so they were taking care of their families. They, my students, were getting jobs to help put food on the table. Oh, yeah. So a student who is absent during class, but you know that it's because they're working to put they're food on the care table. Of somebody, sure. Like how, how am I supposed to take that against them? It's gonna be tough. So then you you have evening hours where you're meeting with students to tr to try to fit their needs because you can't. Uh, we believe in the no harm policy, where you have to meet the child where they are. And if the child can't come to you during that time, then we've got afternoon hours, we've got morning hours, okay. and we were able to kind of move. You're going to try to meet the needs. Yes. Let me go back to something you said. You're going to talk to the new teachers, yes. which will be exciting. Let me ask you. I'm putting you on the spot here. Oh, what advice would you give these two young teachers coming into the type of year we're just talking about they're going to have? Yeah. How are they going to make it? And what's the best thing a new teacher, pretend they're all out there now watching our program. Right? What, <laughs> what would you say to them? Here's the top one or two things I'd be ready to do as a new teacher. Fantastic question. First thing is go to the people around you and learn from their experience. Okay, don't be afraid to get a mentor. Don't be afraid. Okay. Um, and collaborate with all of those around you. Um, it is, that's how we made it through this. It was teachers bonded together to get through this. You worked as a team, right? Yes. You worked as a unit. Um, no one did it by themselves. That is not how this was um, a success. So first thing is, uh, you've got a team of teachers around you. Pick their brain. The toughest thing Ask as a first-year teacher, uh, is a great, that's a great response, is I didn't know how to do a roll book. And oh I was gosh. doing it, and unfortunately I had a senior teacher come to me. 
Fred, you don't have to do it that way. Here's a simpler way. So find yes. this. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. The tips the and wheel. tricks that yes. you, get, you can figure yes. out just by asking those questions instead of laboring for hours trying mm -hmm. to figure it out by yourself. Mm -hmm. Use the experience around you. We've okay. got fantastic teachers throughout So this get time. help. Don't be afraid to ask yep. for help. Yep. Okay. And um, second, it's okay if you have those moments where you feel like an utter failure. <laughs> we all do. You and I were talking before. I wanted we to quit 50 times. Oh my gosh, yeah. that first year of teaching is just the toughest year because you want to have, the, like you have these aspirations. You want to have such a positive impact on kids. Change the world. You right? want to change, change the world. The world. Yeah. Uh, it's only you could get your classroom, right? And <laughs> uh, that's wonderful. And when you feel a slight bit of failure, you're actually being successful somewhere sure, sure. because you're feeling that because you're pushing yourself. Um, so it's okay if you have those moments. Find someone that you can go to. I ended up in the principal's office many times crying my first year of teaching, and I'm yes, not afraid did. to admit it. We all did, we all did. It, it actually helped understanding that others who were in the teaching profession for 20, 30 years, they too were in my shoes at once. Sure. So First year is the toughest year. It is. Toughest but, year. But it's also the, mo the year of the most growth. Oh, enthusiasm, energy. Oh, oh, can't get over it. I can't wait to talk to them and get some okay. of their enthusiasm. You're going to do a great job. <laughs> Stephanie, let me ask you. We've got about five minutes. we got plenty of time. Okay. Where do you see yourself? Do you want to stay in the classroom? Are you interested in administration? What's, what's a five or ten year plan for Ms. Mc Mrs. McKenzie here? So, excellent question. Um, I have my administrative certification already. Oh, you got already. your A&S one. Okay. Yeah, from Johns Hopkins University. Good for you. Um, and I'm going for my admin cert too. Okay. So hopefully in the next. That's to be a principal, right? Yes, that's okay. to be a principal. So hopefully within the next five to ten years, I'll find myself as an assistant. You see principal yourself or principal. going to a, my daughter just became the vice principal at Easton High, oh, and she taught for years. Well, she just says, Dad, you reach a point, and I think you'll find me. You say, I love the classroom, I love the children, but I can help teachers, parents, kids when I become an administrator. Exactly. Somehow we a lot of teachers say that administration is a bad guy. So no, they're not. They're no. playing their role like the teachers are playing their important role. And last year, I got to see that as the reading specialist up at Southerville Middle School. I okay. got to be on the leadership team, and I got to see how decisions were made and how much effort and thought goes in, into those decisions. And sure. it's all for the betterment of our students, staff, and community at large. Okay. So um, I definitely want to be a part of that process, and I want to help Good. teachers. And I just want to have a more of a positive impact across. Sure. It's a wonderful profession. I mean, I, I don't know how you feel. I was in a room with new teachers. I was going to say, there are days you're going to cry. There are days you're going to put your resume out to sell insurance, always is good. And there's but days you know you're going to laugh your heart out. Like <laughs> Stephanie, I like the best thing you're already getting it too. You walk into Acme and someone taps you on the back. And when you get to be an old man like me, that person taps you on the back is about 50 years old. They say, Mr. Mack, do you remember me when you oh. taught me in ninth grade? You have no idea who they are. You might get lucky and know the face. Yeah. And as a teacher, you probably had those moments already that you go, <sighs> you know what? That, uh, that's worth a million dollars. And right? that's why I always attend the high school graduations. Okay. Um, I, I've taught in this county, for, this is my 10th year, um, and I attended, so I first started at Ken Island High School as a long-term substitute. All right. Um, and then I got the position at Stevensville Middle School. And so I've had many students come and go, and I've been into all the different high school graduations, now oh, okay. at Queen Anne's and at Ken Island. and. Being able to see them after the four years of growth in high this school. This makes you smile and feel good, right? It really does. You, can't, you don't buy those things. And right? it's amazing how many of them remember oh, you. Yeah, it, yeah. And, and even when I'm out at restaurants or, or just out in public, they'll see you. So I can't go out in public in sweatpants anymore. <laughs> I did learn that very quickly on the island. Okay. <laughs> Sandy, what's amazing, and uh, I'm going to stop here in a second. People, these young adults now, or older adults, will stop you, and they'll give you quotes that you have no idea you said. You might have, a, you don't realize you probably have a favorite quote like, please pay attention now, or those who work hard are successful. Oh. And they'll throw it in your face and they say, do you remember you used to say that every day? My students know. already started doing that to me today, or this year. Um, okay. Miss, Miss Walver and I, uh, we always say, whenever we were making a mistake, we were like, okay, we are trained professionals. Right. And we said that so many times that at the end of the year, I always get the students to sign my yearbook. That, that trained professionals phrase was everywhere okay. across that yearbook. And it just, it... It was really funny. Really? I didn't realize how many times we had said well, that. I, I, I want to say a million <laughs> times, congratulations on being Teacher of the Year. You help those yeah. new teachers immediately and help uh, Stevensville, Settlersville, every school in this county. The next fall is going to be a challenge. And you educators, uh, I don't know how as a public we thank you. Uh, what you went through the last 14 months, I think the public needs to know. I think 2021-22 school year is going to be a challenging in a whole different way. 
and a lot of hugs, a lot of psychological help, and a lot of mm -hmm. social help are going to be really important. Yes, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you. And more. with people like you, I know it's going to work. Mm -hmm. All right, Stephanie, the tough questions now. Favorite ice cream? Okay. Favorite ice cream? Um, peanut butter and chocolate. Oh, mm, it's going to kill me here. Next. Uh, favorite movie? Favorite movie. Oh, my goodness. Um, Take your time. Armageddon. Oh, okay. Bruce okay. Willis. All right. What type of music do you like? I am a mix between country and okay. rock. Oh, it's all right. Nothing wrong with so that. So it, it, it depends on the day and the mood okay. and what I'm okay. doing. After if I'm working out, rock. If oh, I'm you just kind of laying okay. back, country. Okay. Are you a beach person? I'm a complete beach person. Oh, you like the beach. Okay. I would live in the sand. And if you I could. told me you like the, the. Have you been? You've spent a lot of time on Ocracoke on the Outer Banks in North Carolina? Um, South Nags Head, Ocracoke area, okay. in between there. Is yeah. a Pony Island Motel still there in Ocracoke? They used to have I, a pony in front of it. I, I haven't, haven't been there seen for years. it in a while. No. Okay. All no. right. I hope it's, I'll go, um, when I go in a couple weeks, I'll take it. Let me know. Let Jeff know. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. well look, Stephanie, thank you. You're on summer vacation. Thank yes. you for coming in. Have a great, I hope you go to the state level. I, I think uh, Mr. Strait will buy your Mercedes Benz if they don't give you that. Okay. For all right. I'm going to hold him to that. Yeah, I would. I would. Okay. All right. Wait, what? And best of luck next year. And we really appreciate you joining us today. Thank all you right. so much. Fred. Thank you. My name's Fred McNeil. Thank you for watching QAC TV 7. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time.